Hello friends, welcome to our channel Piping Mantra. Today we are going to discuss about equipment layout. It is also called equipment location plan, equipment location drawing or unit plot plan. In this video we are going to cover topics like what is an equipment layout, all the general consideration while preparing an equipment layout, input required for preparing an equipment layout, clearances and spacing between equipments and from equipments, development of equipment layout and example studies. So guys, if you have not subscribed yet to our channel, please subscribe so that you can see our new upcoming videos in future and please press the bell icon to get all the notifications. And also please watch this video till the end because we are going to discuss about some common mistakes which we should avoid and also some important thumb rules which we should use while preparing an equipment layout. So, without further ado, let's move on to the today's topic. In sense of layout, normally any plant is designed in three stages. Conceptual layout, equipment layout, and piping layout. Now, what is a conceptual layout? It is the part of basic engineering package which is prepared in the early stage consists of information like essential process design requirement such as horizontal and vertical relationship of equipment and space allocation for basic plant requirement like control room laboratories, office, storage etc. We will see what an equipment layout is in the next coming slides. And piping layout. On the equipment layout, it shows all the connected piping as per PNID. Now let's see what is an equipment layout. It is the detailing of conceptual layout. In contrast with overall plot plan, an equipment layout or unit plot plan gives us a detailed view of specific part of a certain area, floor or unit from the whole plant. Equipments are placed based on process flow sequence and operation procedure as per process flow sheet or diagram. We also show floor space needed for the equipments and other facilities. Since we are preparing equipment layout on very early stages of the project, sometimes we might not have all equipment information. We have to assume equipment dimension as per best engineering practice. While placing equipment, we also have to consider access, removal space, cleaning area, storage space and handling facilities. Equipment layout consists of plan view and section view. Equipment layout is the basic document of mechanical engineering design and it is the basis for development of construction drawing by all discipline. Now let's see all the considerations we have to take while developing equipment layout. General considerations are process flow sequence and operating procedures should be thoroughly understood so that equipment arrangement in the plot plan is fully functional according to operation. On your screens, you can see how a PFT transforms to an equipment layout. In later part, we will discuss about placement of equipment, so please watch this video till the end. The unit pipe rack should be kept in the center so that we will have ease in piping by splitting the unit into two or more areas. Pumps may be arranged in two rows close to rack and on either side of the pipe rack at ground floor. Air fin coolers should be installed above the rack or technological structure. Pump handling hydrocarbon should not be installed underneath of air fin coolers. Vessel having large liquid holdup should be installed at lower height and preferably at grade. Tower, column should be located along the pipe rack toward open area for unobstructed erection as well as maintenance at grade. Heat exchanger should be perpendicular to pipe rack to facilitate easy pulling of tube bundle. Heat exchangers and vessels should be grouped together forming outer rows on both sides of the rack. 
Now let's have a look at the process requirements. You can see on your screens the process flow diagram, equipment layout plan view and equipment layout sectional view. So while developing an equipment layout, we have to think the sequence of flow as per process flow diagram, gravity flow wherever required, NPSH requirement as per pump calculation, slope for all the process lines, relation of one equipment location with other equipment position that is fixation of reboiler with respect to column etc. Other piping requirements are piping should be economical, shortest piping as much as possible, we have to consume smaller floor space and material should be smartly used. While routing pipe, we should consult stress engineer for flexibility of critical line so that nozzle and equipment location can be freezed for the critical lines. Piping should be aesthetic, layout should not look ugly. As much as possible, existing structure should be utilized for pipe support. There are some underground requirements as well. Before deciding the equipment location, the facilities such as stroom water drain, affluent drain, fire water, cooling water to be placed underground. We have to check what systems are placed underground and their location before proceeding for the equipment location. Many a times, these equipment foundation piles may clash with the UG facilities which must be avoided. The foundation length of two adjacent equipments is also to be seen so that they do not foul with each other. Let's talk about some climate requirements. Intensity rainfall and wind direction can affect the equipment location. The location of furnace, cooling tower, flare and incinerator are decided by the wind direction and location of effluent plant is decided by the grading of plot. You can see our video on plot plan where we have discussed all these points in details. Let's see about the operation and maintenance requirements. We have to include all the facilities by which we have ease in operation like valve access. We should have clear space for operability and approach. Also, we should think of clear space for access and maintenance. Auxiliaries required for maintenance that is crane, divot, platforms and ladders for maintenance. While fixing location of equipments that is pumps, compressors, centrifugal filters, elevation to be kept in such a way so that it can be maintained in upright position. Allocate space for part removal that is tube bundle for heat exchanger, piston removal of reciprocating pumps etc. In order to achieve these aspects, we might need to change location and elevation of the equipment. Now let's see some construction requirement points. One should think of location of equipment for ease of construction that is towers are always placed near road for access of mobile cranes, placement of guide directs, etc. We have to think of big equipments first like how it will going to be placed then second big and so on the rest of the equipments. Now we will discuss about some safety requirements. As per safety rule we have to separate certain equipments within an area like spillage of storage tanks, requirement of clear area, etc. On your screen, you can see OISD 118 Table 2 for separation of equipment within the process block. Similarly, statutory regulations like OISD 118, GE GAP 2.5.2, Petroleum Act, Gas Cylinder Rules, Starting and Mobile Pressure Vessel Rules, and Factory Inspectorate Rules and PIP Standards should be taken care of. In this OISD 118 Table 2, you can see where we have to maintain minimum 3 meter clearance in between rack and reactors, distillation columns and accumulators. You can refer this table and find minimum space required between reboiler and column. So one might ask what is the basis of this distance? This distance permits the use of mobile equipment and power tools for servicing and maintaining equipment during turnaround periods. Along with all these, it also includes piping. Let's see some mandatory horizontal and vertical clearances. Horizontal clearances from center line railroad track to any obstruction would be 10 feet or 3 meters. Width of primary and secondary road excluding 1500 mm shoulders would be 20 feet or 6 meters. 
clearance from edge of road shoulder to nearest structure equipment or piping as 5 feet or 1.5 meters horizontal clearance around equipment for maintenance primary access would be 4 feet or 1.2 meters secondary access would be 3 feet or 900 mm distance between horizontal vessels dished end or shell and rack would be 13.5 feet or 4 meters distance between largest vertical vessel and towers outside diameter or outer shell and pipe rack is 13.5 feet or 4 meters clear platform width in front of equipment manways is 3 feet or 900 mm minimum clearance around any obstruction on a platform is 2.5 feet or 750 mm at driver end of pumps where truck access is required is 10 feet or 3 meters at driver end of pumps where truck access is not required is 5 feet or 1.5 meters in between pumps including its connected piping is 3 feet or 900 mm at shell cover end of exchangers at grade for access way would be 4 feet or 1.2 meters in between exchangers and other equipment or other another exchanger is 3 feet or 900 mm Heat exchanger tube bundle removal is bundle length plus 3 feet or 900 mm. Compressors removal of piston and end assembly from inside of building wall or adjacent equipment is removal part plus 5 feet or 1500 mm. Underground pipes edge to edge is 300 mm minimum. Above ground pipes edge of big flange OD to edge of small pipe OD plus insulation plus 25 mm minimum. Vertical or headroom clearances are over rail roads top of rail to bottom of any obstruction is 23.5 feet or 7 meters. Over plant roads for major mobile equipment is 23.5 feet or 7 meters. Over secondary roads, bottom of pipe and access ways for mobile equipment is 16.5 feet or 5 meters. Over grade and bottom of pipe or inside battery limit at pump row access way, 11.5 feet or 3.5 meters. Over walkways, passways and platforms to nearest obstruction and inside building, 7.5 feet or 2.2 meters. Over exchangers at grade, shell cover channel end, 5 feet or 1500 mm. Platform ladders and stairways. Shall be in the minimum, consistent with access and safety requirements. Access to platforms shall be by permanent sidestep ladder. Soon you will see a video on access and maintenance requirement from a channel. Now we will see how preliminary equipment layout is prepared and further updated to final one. Piping engineer should first develop a one plan elevation view of all the equipments with to the scale form equipment list where he can get major equipment dimensions and relatively locate them to fulfill process requirements as per process flow sheets. He should keep good margins for notch the lengths, bends, walls, slopes and distances between equipments etc. by locating the equipment. He must as well think of structural or concrete beam depths, monorails, pipeways, cable trays, lighting etc. while deciding the floor elevation. This one plan elevation view should be discussed internally and then with the process engineering group who will check relative locations and elevations of the equipment. Routing of major and critical process lines should also be discussed at this stage. After deciding floor elevations and number of floors, work can be started on preliminary arrangement of drawings which should show each floor plan as well as elevation views at different sections. Before proceeding further, Let's briefly discuss about input or information collected from various groups to complete the equipment layout effectively. Now let's see what type of input information do we require from what departments. Project design data. This consists of following information as geographic location, proximity to roads and railways, topography and local codes and regulations, 
weather conditions such as rainfall records, seasonal temperature differences, wind direction, outlet points for drains, etc. As we already discussed, the information such as wind direction influences the location of cooling towers, furnaces, stacks, etc. Similarly, the information regarding outlet drain points affects the design of storm water drains and requirements of enclosures. Now, let's see what input do we need from process. We need process flow diagrams, PFTs, and piping and instrument diagrams, that is PNIDs. PFTs and PNIDs indicate the interconnectivity of each equipment, information regarding solid handling, gravity feed, line slopes, loop sizes, venting requirement, special piping materials, etc., which in turn governs the equipment location to a great extent. You can see our video on both PNIDs and PFTs. Links are given in the description box below. Also, we need type of buildings or structures surface protection requirements, size and type of moving equipment, approach and operating space requirements, monorails, EOT, hot requirements for maintenance, type of hazardous and safety requirements. The input required from mechanical are as follows. This includes fabricated equipment such as vessels, heat exchangers, reactors, tanks, and proprietary equipments like pumps, compressors, furnaces, etc. While locating, the equipment should be grouped to have optimum location for minimum pipe run as well as follow the process flow sequence. The equipment layout can basically be divided into two configurations. Horizontal equipment The grade mounted horizontal arrangement as seen in the refineries and petrochemical plants. Vertical equipment The vertical arrangement as seen in many chemical process industries, it is located at multi-level in steel or concrete structure. From electrical, we need information like space requirement for cable racks and trenches, space for local push button boats. From instrumentation, we need space requirements for instrument cables, space and location requirements for analyzer cabinets or rooms, etc. From civil, we need factory act requirements, economic considerations with regard to type of structure, column spacing, and tie beam, etc meeting process requirements, size and depth of building column footings, size and slope of flow drains. We need inputs like erection requirements such as bolted joints in the structure which are going to be bolted at site, erection openings and floors, openings and walls or door sizes, extra space for derrick or crane etc. From client, we need Preference for type of structure, maintenance facilities like cranes, monorails, operational amenities like office, toilet, block, change room, lunch room, aesthetical preferences like vasto and all etc. Details are received from all these groups and the client and after that, updated prelim equipment layout copies of unit plot plans including all the revisions are distributed to all of them. It is advisable that all proposals to be discussed during conceptual stage itself with all the groups so as to avoid major revisions at the later stage. In some projects, we have process licenses. To be specific, process licensor is the one who owns all the processes or some part of process within the plant. In some cases, preliminary arrangement plans are furnished by the licensor, usually on 1 is 200 scale and our work is limited to update the same incorporating comments of various groups and update the exact shape and dimensions of the equipment as and when received from the vendor and review according to statutory norms of local bodies. Sometimes it may differ from country to country. Now, let's see what final equipment layout drawing will look like. Very first thing is, plant north direction should be shown. If possible, you can also show true north and wind direction as same as overall plot plan. Each unit plan is to have a key plan of overall GA highlighting the area covered by that unit plot plan, like this example shown on your screens. All the equipment items should be located by northing and easting coordinates or by center lines or dimension from the column center. Layout must show clearly the support details of the equipment like number of supports, type of support, and location of support. In case of horizontal equipment line drum or exchanger, we have to mark fixed saddle support like we have marked here. Equipment layout will never show the nozzle orientation of equipment. For that, you have to refer nozzle orientation drawing of specific equipment. Each floor level shall be shown separately with its battery limit and coordinates on match line. 
Scale can be 1 is to 50 depending upon the area coverage. If most of the equipments are big, then it can also be reduced to 1 is to 100 to 1 to, uh, is to 250. The north, south and east, west or xy grid should be marked as per civil column base. Approach to road of the plant to be shown from where operator can access. We should show pullout and lay down space and reserved space for mobile equipment for equipment maintenance as we discussed. Intermediate platforms with the elevation shall be shown. Sufficient sectional views will be drawn. It is better to cover area between two column grids, for example one bay, in one sectional view in order to maintain clarity. Requirement of minimum clear height bottom elevation of monorails and elevation of top of bracket for traveling crane should clearly be marked in sectional view. Include a table showing equipment description and capacity. Show main pipe rack which should include spacing for cable tray loads from electrical and instruments. Various floor protection areas should be marked properly. Show coverage of roof wherever required like this. Show major openings in floors. Show major trenches, sumps, and pits. Write whole list and notes properly so that it can be used and taken care of in the future. So that's all from our side on equipment layout. This equipment layout then used for piping layout of that specific area. If you want to see what guidelines we have to follow while preparing piping layout, you can click on this window here and to see video on pin ID, click here. And to see out all other videos, click here. And please write us in comment section what is your opinion on this video or any suggestions and requests are welcome. Soon we will be releasing series of short videos. So please hit like, subscribe and share. Till then, bye bye. Stay safe.